Hey, how's everyone doing today? I hope everyone's having a good day. So for today, I wanted to do something a little bit different from what I usually do. I know I usually do text effects, but for this one, I wanted to recreate a cover art for the song I Spy by Kyle featuring Lil Yachty. So what really drew me into this cover art was the gradient and the silhouette of the artist. I thought it was really cool and I thought it was a very unique look that I haven't seen in other cover art. So it really helped it stand out to me. So um, I want to show everybody how to break it down and recreate something similar to this. So other than that, let's get started. So heading over to Photoshop, I'm just going to create a new canvas. And this one is going to be 1280 by 720 with a resolution of 300 and RGB color mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is just unlock my background layer. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create the background and that's going to be creating an adjustment layer. It's going to be a gradient adjustment layer. So once that's done, you're going to want to click here first and change the opacity to 100% so that both colors show when you add them. So my first color is going to be a dark blue and that's going to be 111B59. My second color is going to be my green. So that's going to be the gradient I'm going to be using. It's going to be 17D289. Once that's ready, you press OK, press OK here, and I'm going to change the angle to be negative 45. So spacing down. Once that's ready, you press OK. Our second step is going to just be kind of adding some variances of color, light and darkness in the gradient. So we're going to do this by adding a new layer and getting your brush tool. Just press B on your keyboard. Make sure the hardness is set to zero and it's just a round brush and make sure your colors are black and white. So all you're gonna start doing is just adding black and white um, blotches wherever you want. You can make your brush bigger using the brackets as well if you wanna just kinda have spots like that. It's up to you. Obviously it's gonna be different for everybody. You can press X to change the colors as well. So like that. The only thing I recommend is kinda leaving some white area here cause we're gonna put our model here later on and it's better if it's a white um, brighter in this area. But other than that, it's your choice. So once you think it's good enough, the more black and white um, blotches you do, the more variance you'll get. So once you think it's done, you want to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur enough to where everything kind of blends in together. So I'm going to do 90, but you can also do kind of a higher number if you want less um, kind of mixture. So I'm gonna do 90 because I want uh, to this to be kind of easier to see. The more you blur it, the harder it'll be see because it's more mixed together. So then I'm gonna press radius of 90, press okay. And for my blending mode on this one, I'm gonna set it to soft light. There we go. So you can see the variance is there. If it's still too much, you can always lower the opacity as well. If you think, hey, I, I did way too much. Um, but I like the way it is because I'm gonna be adding uh, other layers and it's gonna just start to lose its color. Um, so you want to kind of bright colors in the begin with. So my next thing is going to add my model. So this one is by Spentis to lover. This is the soft game that you're going to be using. Everything I'll be using today will be in the description. Um, this one is free for commercial and personal use. So up to you if you would like to use it. I'm going to copy the image and I'm going to bring it over to Photoshop and I press control V to paste it. And the first thing I'm going to do is press control minus to zoom out. And then press control T so that I can actually shrink it because it's way too big. So I'm going to line it up in the middle. Press control plus to zoom in, see where it's at. Then I'm going to hit control T again and I'm going to kind of just lower it like that. Since I need to write some stuff above his head. So make it a little bit bigger. And there you go. I think that's fine for now. So once that's done, I'm going to go to my magic wand tool. You could also press W. And I'm going to press select subject. I'm going to let Photoshop do all the work for me in selecting my model. But I always recommend either using the pen tool to have a uh, more accurate removal or you can also use a layer mask. So what I'm going to be doing once I hit select subject, I'm going to hit select and mask and just change the parameters. I'm going to change the radius to one and the shift edge to about 10. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do to that. And for output, I'm going to have it as layer mask. And then I'm going to press OK. And this is just going to create that layer mask for me. And as you can see, 
um, if you kind of are okay with maybe working on a quick project or working on a concept and you want to just quickly do it um, so as you can see here I, the arm is a little messed up so you can always go to your layer mask and clean it up um, just rather quickly so get out your brush tool make it smaller using the left bracket make it white make sure it's white and just kind of go over the arm a little bit quickly and there you go you've fixed the arm and there you go so the next step after that is to add another layer of a gradient but this one is going to be an adjustment layer of a gradient map and the colors we're going to be using for this one is going to be the exact same blue and green that we used earlier so for the blue 111 b59 and then for the green it's going to be 17 d289 and we're gonna hit okay and there you go so as you can see um with the soft light layer that we had earlier you can see the variances and colors the way it's changing so now there's more green up here some blues in here as well so it looks um a lot better in my opinion because it's creating some changes that aren't as um formal or constructed so you can see some more differences in it so moving on the next thing we're gonna have to do is add some shading to our model so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna create a new layer above our model and then we're gonna make this a clipping mask so you can just right click and say create clipping mask and it'll anything I do to this layer will only affect this bottom layer so I'm gonna get my brush tool and gonna make it a little bit bigger and then I'm going to change the color and the color for this one is gonna be one two two e 5e and that's going to be it for this one so with that in mind i still got to make sure my hardness is at zero percent in a soft round bush so once that's ready i'm going to make this bigger and all i'm going to do is just start slowly painting over so i want to like that and i'm doing a big brush so i can be zoomed out and still kind of get that feathering effect right here so once that's complete for me, I'm going to get my eraser tool and I'm just going to erase part of his face because I want his face to be revealed. And then go back to my brush tool, make it smaller this time. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so I can be a little more accurate. I'm just going to cover up his ear because I just want his face to be visible. And then make it smaller and then just kind of cover up his shoulder. So obviously with this, you're going to want to just take your time. So I'm just doing it quickly for the sake of the video. And there we go. And there we go so that's gonna be our model and now we can start adding some more um, elements to kind of bring out the picture a little bit more so for the next element we're gonna be adding is a light flare so the light flare I'm gonna be using is from purple 11 they're free for personal and commercial use so definitely check them out support them always um, support people who give their things out for free for commercial use because they um, really help the design community in astounding amounts of ways so for this one all you're going to want to do is just select on whatever image you'd like to use and it'll immediately start to download so i'm going to be using this one this vertical one i already have it downloaded so i'm just going to move it over here and i'm going to bring it up into my canvas next thing i'm going to do is just going to make it big enough to be there and then i'm going to press enter and as you can see, because it is a black background, you can just go to your blending mode and put it as screen and it'll cover right there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is kind of enhance the color a little bit more. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna do hue and saturation. And I'm gonna create a clipping mask. You can hold on your keyboard and press in between. And that'll create a clipping mask or you can just right click. For the hue, I'm gonna set it to 136. So. It'll do a slight difference and then you could always play with the parameter if you want to do that, if you want to make it lighter, things like that. But I think just the hue itself is fine with me. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is add a noise layer to add some more texture to it. So the one I'm going to be using is from Spoon Graphics, um, which is also a YouTube channel. Um, if I remember his name, Chris Spooner uh, does amazing tutorials that I've used in the past before. Um, they're really helpful, really beneficial. And then his website as well has his tutorials, his freebies as well. 
Um, so the one we're going to be using today is his film dust uh, textures. So definitely check him out. He's a great content creator. If you would like to kind of learn more about Photoshop as well, some other tutorials. So with that in mind, feel free to download them. And then once you open the pack, you'll have a, uh, about 30 of these. So I'm going to be using number 30 for our project and I'm gonna just bring that into Photoshop. And once that's into Photoshop, I'm just gonna make it large enough to cover the entire canvas. And again, because it was a black background, it only looks blue because of the grading we have up here. Uh, I'm just gonna set the blending mode to screen and there you go. Actually, I'm gonna try Color Dodge. Color Dodge is a little bit brighter. Um, some of the dust goes away into dark blue, so it kind of gives a little bit more variance to that one. And then I'm going to lower the opacity to about 65. I think that'll be good. We'll go like that. And then the next thing we're going to do is add the text. So this is going to be the one layer I want above the gradient map. I want everything else affected by it. Cause as you can see, it kind of looks weird without it. Um, but once that's set, I'm going to have create my new layer. I'm going to my text tool. Harmony will be the font I'm going to be using today. I'm going to make sure it's white. It will be in the description as well. And I am going to just write my title above. So if it was a deep, um, if it was a cover album, I'd be writing deep abyss because I'm getting ocean and like water vibes from this design. So press control T and just move it towards the middle. Um, I have the size set to 40 and then to have it give it a little bit more pop to it. I'm going to open up the layer side by double clicking on that layer and I'm going to add an outer glow. It's going to be an, a white outer glow with an opacity of 55, a spread of one and a size of six and a range of 50. And that's just going to add a slight glow to it to make it pop out. So you'll be able to see the difference like this. But other than that, that's going to be the entire tutorial. So there's a number of ways you can make this your own. You can change the uh, gradients, uh, use a different model, use different light flares, use different textures. So there's different ways you can customize this. So I would definitely love to see what everyone is able to create. Um, Cause I think it's just really unique how everybody can put their own twist, in, twist to it. So um, while I'm talking, I'm putting up some examples as well. My only recommendation is whatever gradient you decide to use is just make sure that it's very uh, contrasting colors between the two. Since I used the pink and white uh, gradient and then it wasn't as um, neat in my opinion compared to the darker uh, contrasting colors I used. So, but other than that, if you have any comments, definitely put them in the video and I'll definitely try it and respond to the best of my ability. But other than that, have a good rest of your day.